Okay, so for those of you that are absent today, this is a recorded video lesson regarding combination circuits. We're starting our class off today just by analyzing uh, this light bulb configuration with a series connection and a parallel connection. So I'm asking the class, where do you think is going to, which, which configuration will produce more light? In which way do you think your headlights on your car are wired? Take a moment, just talk that over, and then we'll share for the whole class in a moment. So take, take a moment, talk. Uh, but they're going to answer letter A, which one produces more light, and I'm going to go over to Ben, because I heard Ben say this correctly, I believe. Oh, I said parallel. It's going to produce more light. <clears throat> so I like it. How many of you agree? Yeah, good. The entire class is saying yes. I hope that you watching it at home uh, agree as well. Uh, why do you think, Ben? Uh, why they produce more light? Yeah. Oh, I, I oh. don't know. I was answering B. Oh, okay. Yeah, so how about which one produce? Who's going to try it for us? Who, why, why does letter? Why does the parallel produce more light? Do you want to try that? Um, Gabe's going to try it. Hopefully the microphone, you can hear it pretty well. I just know that with the, the series circuit, each light bulb would take a portion of the voltage until it drops down to zero. So awesome. I'm going to try to write on here that we have power <laughs> is equal to I times delta V. We have power is equal to V squared over R, and we have power is equal to I squared times R. Now, all of these are the same resistances, right? So which of those three equations are you sort of looking at to say if uh, if the voltage is shared, which one sort of shows you that there's going to be more light produced with the parallel? V squared over R? Yeah. yeah. Could you also do it with I squared times R? Would you agree that the current's reduced in this one here? Yeah. Then it is through them? So either one of those will work. So yes, you're, you're correct. The uh, the parallel light is going to provide a lot more light for us in the series. How about letter B? Which one do you think uh, your car is wired in? Back to Ben. All right, so this one's on so Ben. Go. I said that our car lights, our headlights are parallel because I have experience where like my right headlight will go out, but my left one will stay. Thank on. goodness, right? Because yeah. if your left one goes out, you don't want them to be wired in series because then they would both shut down. Nice. All right. So a little bit of parallel uh, in series connection. Now, today's main topic is on combination circuits. You notice this is a concept-based question to begin with. The circuit shown has three identical light bulbs, all the same resistance R. Uh, when switch S is closed, and I want to highlight that one there, switch S, when it's closed, that means that current can flow. Um, how will the brightnesses of bulbs A and B compare with that of C? I'm going to ask you to have a conversation with people at your table. If you're watching this at home, uh, think about what that is. Maybe pause the video uh, if you're not sure until you can think about it. All right, talk it over really quick with people at your table. Where do you, where, which, how will the brightnesses compare? So, this is the battery. So the battery is our source of potential. Uh, electrons are moving this way through the circuit. But we think of it as conventional current. So when we draw an eye there, we think of it as the direction positive charges would go. So the polarity of this battery, plus and minus, we would sort of think of the charges, conventional current flowing clockwise through the circuit. OK? All right. We'd love to have someone, and hopefully people at home can hear this. What do you think uh, would be, uh, how do you think the brightnesses will compare? And again, I'm going to ask you for reasoning. It's a safe environment. So if you get it wrong, we're, we're going to respect the fact that you're trying this. Thank you. I can see that. I see, I see that Braylon is going to try it. All right, Braylon's on record. Go. Uh, I would say that. <laughs> The brightness of A and B would be slightly lower than C. The brightness is that correct? I can add. Um, why? <laughs> so why? <laughs> All right, Ben, go. So I believe so uh, Braylon passed it off to Ben. Go. Where the A and B light bulbs are would be considered a series circuit because where the S is. Right. So A and B technically are in parallel with each other. Okay. They're in parallel with each other, but they're in series with C. 
So we would say that this is a combination circuit. There, there is a series component where everything that flows through C is going to then flow through A and B. Yeah. But we would say A and B are in parallel with each other. So we have a, it's called a combination circuit. So now I'm going to show you guys how to analyze this. Like we can go through and calculate what the current flow in each bulb is, what the voltage drop across. I'm going to show you that. This is a concept-based question to begin with. Okay, go ahead, Gordon. Thank you. So, so now it's Gordon on record. Go. Okay. So since it's a series, the voltage drop for C is going to be the same voltage drop as it would be through A and B. Like that, I'm trying to think of it as like its own unit. It's like imagining there was just one light bulb there. Okay. But one light bulb for A and B? Yeah, like, like well, to think of it first as the voltage drops, so like um, if there was like 18 volts in total, there'd be a 9 volt voltage drop at C. And then at the S mark, the current gets divided into two, if I'm understanding that correctly. And so there's less power in total going to both of them. So that's why they're decreased in brightness. Interesting. Yeah. So you got some really good elements there. A couple of things that are a little bit off, right? But again, you got some good. If this combination of light bulbs had the same resistance as C, if it did, then there would be equal, if that was 18 volts, 9 volts across there, 9 volts across there. But let's look at the resistances of those two in parallel. Those two in parallel would have how much resistance compared to letter C? They're in parallel with each other. So this if this was 10 ohms, and that's 10, and that's 10, wouldn't this be 5? So they wouldn't have equal voltage across them, because I would consider that as a you mentioned something really, really clever, and this is what we're going to show you, is when you have a complex circuit or combination circuit, you sort of break individual components that are parallel. You break them into a equivalent resistance that would be in series, and then you just sort of analyze it with a series circuit. So we're going to show you that technique. Someone mentioned current. Let me try. Let me write this one down. I squared times R. Would you guys agree that that's a way that we could look at power? Someone mentioned current being divided. I can't remember if it was Gordon or who. But the current that flows through C, do you see that that's going to be divided to flow through A and B? So if we design, if we design this, if we go through and say that this is 2 amps, that 2 amps, because this is a parallel branch here, and those are equal, would you agree that each of them would get 1 amp? So if I think of it just in terms of power is equal to I squared times R, uh, the current flowing through C is twice as great as it would be flowing through A or B. So that would burn, well, how much brighter? It would be four times. Thank you for that. Because I'm squaring that current. So I get four times the power being delivered to letter C than I do through A and B. So you notice, again, that we have a series portion with a parallel portion. So it's a combination circuit. Uh, so it would be that, uh, I think, Braylon, you started this to say that a and B were going to be dimmer than C. Yes. You're right. They actually be quite a bit dimmer. That is not being recorded right now. You did not hear that. All right. Because uh, we are respecting our classroom rules. All right. I thought it was about to be like a fire drill. I thought like, oh my gosh. All right. bursting in the ceiling. So we are, we're, we're back on track here. All right. How about what happens when switch S is closed, or opened, rather? Take a moment, talk that over. When S is open, what happens? Very open-ended question. But what is so Yeah, if you notice, it's just be a series. Yeah, it's just be a series. So because this is open-ended, there's lots of ways you can answer this. Uh, what happens when switch S is opened? We're going to have... We're going to have... <laughs> Hold on, you want to try it? Very open-ended. What, what do you think would happen? I said A would turn off. You are correct. A would turn off. There's more that we could answer, but A would certainly turn off. Go ahead, Keegan. What's another one? Say it again. What resi the resistance for the entire circuit? Yeah. Oh, oh, no, pick me. Oh, no, pick me. 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 Pick me.
that the resistance that the battery receives would be bigger? How many of you agree with that? If we open up letter A, so we, we, we open that switch, so that one, you were correct, light bulb A, light bulb A will turn on. No, it'll, it'll turn on, because when I open the switch, that means that bulb will go out. You're saying that the resistance that the battery would see would increase? How many of you agree with that? I would agree with you. You're correct. The, the resistance would increase because if you think about that, when I provide a double pass for that current to go through, this resistance is actually smaller than a single bulb, right? Yeah. So, again, I put some numbers down there. If this were a 10 ohm resistor, if that were 10, and this was 10 and this was 10, the combination there would be 5. If one of them shuts down, now the combination would just be 10. And that would go from 10. Would you guys agree that this would be 10 plus 5, which would be 15 ohms? Yeah. yeah. If one of those things, now it becomes 10 plus 10, which would be 20. And so not only does light A go down, what happens to the brightness of letter C? Would you see that C would actually get dimmer? Can you see that? So uh, someone said A would shut down, and that's true. A shuts down, and then B gets brighter. Uh, B would, ooh. Why would, you, why would, you, okay. would B get brighter? Wouldn't it? No. Isn't, isn't it receiving the two amps now? That's a good well, Ah, but remember, two amps is because this was 10 and that was 5. So that would have been 15 amps going, or 15 ohms. Uh, if that shuts down, now it's 20. The current reduces. Would you guys agree that B would actually get dimmer then? Yeah. Uh, oh, no. What about letter C? C would definitely get dimmer because I'm cutting that current down. Okay. Uh, what happens if all C burns out? Everything works. works. Everything ah. goes down. And then the brightness, and this one's a little bit tricky. The brightness of bulb C would, would actually be affected if I shut that down. Now, I'm going to show you guys how to analyze that, uh, just going through and showing that. But I want to I want to do a quick little FET simulation what just so you can see it. Yeah, it would be. You're, you're right. If I open S, it's the same as if bulb A were to burn out. All right, so you guys did this, or at least I showed you guys how to do this. I'm going to build this really quickly so you can see it. I think we had a battery that looks like that. I don't need a switch, but I'm going to put one in there. Uh, so I'm just doing a really quick setup. And so hopefully this isn't too uh, too bad for you at home that's watching this. <coughs> what was it again? Did we have a single light bulb right here? Single yeah. light bulb. And then we had this branching off into two? Yeah. yeah. So something like this. We had another switch here, which I, I suppose we can, we can put that on. It's nice when we can build this. Very, very quickly, virtually. It's not the same as building it in real life. Yeah, we should build it. Well, we did. That's what we actually did yesterday. Oh. We, we started building circuits. No, I missed it. And uh, sure enough, in the time it takes for paint to dry, Uh, you can sort of see how that's operating. And so uh, those of you that said that letter uh, C would be brighter than A and B, you're correct. Oh, yeah. If I were to open up this here, so that would be equivalent to that light bulb sort of burning out. You notice, um, actually, it looks like that got brighter, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this got dimmer? Yeah. And that got brighter? Yeah. Okay. Now. We're going to try to analyze that circuit. I'm going to show you how to go through and do the do the math portion of that. Uh, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that, folks. When you have a combination of circuit, a combination of series in parallel, the technique, and I'm going to go with Gordon's approach on this, is we're going to view that parallel branch. We're going to view that as an equivalent resistance of a series resistor uh, in series with R1. So when we go to analyze this. Uh, I'm going to switch this over now for those of you that are at home. I'm going to try to solve this kind of problem uh, using my webcam.
<clears throat> so hopefully this will work. Well, I'm going to try it. Okay. Hopefully, at home you can see this. And what we want to do is I want to show you how to, how to analyze this uh, using a combination of uh, sort of breaking this circuit down into a series portion with that. And I'll show you how we do that with, the, with this diagram. So, folks, when I go to analyze this, I'm going to take this portion and I'm going to break that into a series equivalent resistance. So I'm going to go ahead and start drawing some new circuits over here. I'm going to take a 15 volt battery, leave the 10 ohm in there. So that's R1, 10 ohms. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that equivalent resistance of the 30 and 60 in parallel. I'm going to take just a moment and I'm going to show you uh, something called the product over the sum. So I'm going to, I want to develop really quick a uh, very simple relationship when we have two things in parallel. So if I have two things that are in parallel, I would say 1 over REQ is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. If I want to add these, I have to have a least common denominator, correct? So the least common denominator of this would be R1, R2. So I'm going to say 1 over REQ is equal to something R1, R2 plus something R1, R2. So I'm going to, I'm going to multiply this one here by R2 over R2. And this one I'm going to multiply by R1 over R1. Now I can add those. I get 1 over REQ is equal to R. Uh, I'm going to write that as R1 plus R2 all over R1, R2. Since I'm looking for R equivalent, I would take the reciprocal of that. And what I get is a, a really simple relationship when two items are in parallel. I can come up with the equivalent resistance as the product of the two resistances divided by the sum of the two resistances. So, product over the sums. If it was three, can you just... No, with three, you have to be careful because, remember, the least common denominator with two is just going to be yeah. like the product of those. When I have three, it's, it's, you're going to end up... The, the numerator doesn't become just the sum of those. It's more like the sum of the products. Uh, it, it gets more complicated, so... I wouldn't say that uh, if you have to do a three parallel combination, yeah, or you could do it. You could think of a three parallel combination as two in parallel with each other. Find the equivalent for that, and then the next, the the first one that you didn't consider, you could you could actually break it up into smaller chunks. But this is what we'd call the product over the sums. So when I go through to do this, um, I'm going to replace that R two three. So again, I'm going to take that and I'm going to think of that as an equivalent resistance. I might write it like this. This is R2 in parallel with R3. And that value would be equal to the product over the sums. Well, the product of that is uh, 30 times 60. The sum is, is 90. So that equivalent resistance, 30 times 60 is... 1800, divide that by 90, and I see the equivalent resistance is 20. So the equivalent resistance of those two in parallel is 20 ohms. Now at this point, I have a, I have a, would you guys agree that this is just a series circuit? Yes. Okay, so I've taken that parallel branch and I've replaced it with an equivalent resistance of those, of those things now. Sort of like treating it as a 20 ohm resistor. Now, if I wanted, I could I could go one step further. I'm going to guess that many of you would not need to do this next step, but this is just sort of a convenience way to do this. I could think of this now as a single resistance value, where this again is 15 volts. This right here is R equivalent for the entire circuit. So this is 10 and that's 20. Would you agree that this would just be a 30 ohm equivalent resistance? Yeah. So all I'm doing is I'm taking this circuit 
and I'm analyzing all of the resistive components and I'm determining that the battery sees a 30 ohm resistance. Now, if the battery sees a single 30 ohm resistance, I can calculate I pretty easily. I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I, again, is the same anywhere I look in that circuit. So the total current coming from the battery is just delta V over R. It's a 15 volt battery, a 30 ohm total resistance that's 0 0.5 amperes. So what I've done is I've determined the current coming from that battery is half an amp. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this information and I'm going to go backwards this way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and sort of work backwards through this circuit and then eventually finish it up by looking at everything there. So the process that you go through is you break the circuit down into simpler components and then once you determine that you sort of go backwards to determine everything else. So let's try that. If this is a half an amp current well, that means that there's half an amp going through here. And that means there's half an amp going through here. Yeah. If I want to figure out delta V across this first resistor, delta V is just I times R. I see that that, that resistance has a current of 0.5 amperes flowing through it, and it's got a resistance of 10 ohms. So that would be 0.5 amps multiplied by 10 ohms, uh, that would be 5 volts of potential difference across that, across that resistor. How much should be across this one? This should be 10. And you can check that. Delta V, again, is equal to I times R. It's still half an amp, but the equivalent resistance is 20 ohms. That would be 10 volts. So what I'm seeing here is that the first resistor gets 5 volts of that potential, the second resistor gets 10 volts. But you remember that this, ten, this second resistor is actually a parallel combination. Now this last step, remember this is an equivalent resistance. When I take a look at this over here, I'm going to now use the fact, and I don't know if I can zoom in any further there, the potential difference from that point to this point is 10 volts. If I were to take a voltmeter and place it there, I would read a potential difference of 10 volts across there. If I want to know the current through here, you notice that I have half an amp flowing through here, correct? But that current's going to be split up. Some's going to go this way, some's going to go that way. But each of these resistors has a 10 volt drop across it. So if I want to get I through R3, it's going to be delta V across that divided by R. So I'm going to write that as delta V across that resistor divided by its resistance. Well, that voltage is 10 volts. I calculated that by, by this setup over here. That was the voltage drop across that parallel resistance. So that 10 volts is going to be dropped across that resistor, but it's only got 60 ohms, or that one has 60 ohms of resistance. So when I take 10 divided by 60, I get 0.167. So the current flowing through that one, 0.5 comes in, but 0.167 flows through that. How much should flow through this one? It should be 0.333. Because if half an amp comes in and it's now split up, remember this one has this one has twice the resistance, so it should have half the current flowing through it. And so if I wanted to calculate the current flowing through R2, I could go I2 is equal to delta V over R2. I got 10 volts, divide that by 30 ohms. And that is, that's my 0.333 amps. So what I've done now is I've determined the current flowing through each device. And I've got the voltage drop across each device. If I know the current and the voltage drop across each device, I can calculate anything else like power and stuff like that. Make sense?
There you go. Now I'm going to do one more with you, and uh, I'm giving you guys a um, I'm giving you guys some problems to try in combination circuits. Um, and really, if you can handle combination circuits, I mean, you can take anything and break it down into a simpler arrangement of resistance values. And uh, the way I approach this is I always sort of start, if I have the voltage source on the left, I always sort of start farthest to the right and try to break that down into, into more simpler components. So I would start looking at this and say, I'm going to take these two that are in series with each other, and I'm going to replace that with an equivalent resistance. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start redrawing that with that with these two in series with each other. Would you agree that the 5 ohm and the 15 ohm in series is just 20? Yeah. So I could say that this right here, which is the equivalent of 3 and 4, I might write that as R34 is 20 ohms. That's the equivalent of those two things that were in series. Now this is still R2. That's 60 ohms. This is R1. And this is R5. Ben, question? Why in the last one was it the product divided by the sum and this one the average? Uh, because these, thank you for that, these are in series now. The other ones were in parallel. So when I looked at this one up here, uh, this was a parallel combination. So when I do that, uh, the uh, 1 over RQ is equal to the 1 over 1 over R1 plus R1 over R2. But when they're in series, it's just a simple addition. Okay. So now you notice here, uh, R2 is six. Is that 60? Yeah. Well, my next yeah, step parallel. my next step is to take these two that are in parallel with each other and replace that with a single resistance that's in series with R1 and R5. So... The way that you typically solve these is you just sort of create a cascading event of uh, a cascading uh, sequence of more simplified circuits, and then you just sort of work backwards through it. So again, I have E, which is my electromotive force. I've got R1, and then I'm going to replace R2 in parallel with R34 with a single resistance which is equal to the product over the sums. So you might write this as R2, comma, 3, parallel 4. I'm sorry, that was 3 series. Uh, that's not right. I'm going to write that as R2 in parallel with 3, comma, 4. That's the way I might write that. Well, that's the product over the sums, right? So I could write that as that value is going to be 60 multiplied by 20 divided by 80. One more time, 15. So wonderful. That's 15 ohms. This one is still 20, and this one is still 25. So now I, now I have three resistors all in series. You could do one more step if you wanted to. You could go through and say, well, let's just make that be a single battery with a single resistance. Some of you are not going to need to do that because you, you know, when you have three resistors in series, this just becomes the addition of those. What is that, 40, 20, is that 60? Our equivalent for the entire thing is 60 ohms. It's just the addition of those, right? So 25 plus 15 plus 20 gives me 60 ohms. This is a 120 volt source. So the current flowing through this is just delta V over R. Well, that's 120 divided by 60. That's 2 amps. <clears throat> so the, <clears throat> the current 
coming from the voltage source is 2 amperes. I come over here, I see that this is 2 amps. And it doesn't matter where I look, that current is the same everywhere throughout. Now, do you see that I can calculate the voltage drop across R1 and the voltage drop across R5 right now? Because I know the current flowing through it, and that's a single resistor in my original circuit. So if 2 amperes is flowing through that, I can calculate delta V. Let's go ahead and do that. Delta V across this one is I times R. Well, that's 2. That's 2 multiplied by the resistance of 25. Would you agree that's 50 volts? Okay, so I figured out the voltage drop across that first resistor, 50 volts. Can I calculate the voltage drop across the bottom resistor? I have 2 amps, so delta V is just equal to I times R. Uh, that's 2 multiplied by 20, and that's 40 volts. So I've got 120 volt potential. 50 volts is dropped across there. The other 40 volts is dropped across there. Would you agree that this arrangement right here, this bank of resistors has to have how much voltage drop across it? 30 volts. Because the 120 is dropping 50 here and 40 there, well, this has to make up the, the remainder, right? So delta V across this entire bank is 30 volts. Let's take that up to here. Yep, yep. Let's take that up to here. I notice that uh, the delta V across this part is 30 volts. So if I want to know the current through this circuit, right, or through this resistance, I across there is delta V over R. Well, <clears throat> it has 30 volts of potential across it, and that's a 20 ohm resistance. That would be 1.5 amperes. So flowing through this portion is 1.5 amps. <clears throat> How much must be flowing through this? A half an amp. And again, I know that because the total current of 2 amps is going to be divided now. Some's going to go through here. Some's going to go through there. This is 1.5 amps there. This one must be 0.5. Now you can go through and check that. Because that current is going to be 30 divided by 60. 30 divided by 60 is 0.5, which is what we're expecting. Now our last step is to take this and, and figure out anything that I don't know going through here. We should be able to calculate everything. I already know the I through here. I is 2. I is 2. We calculated the current through this one is 1.5, correct? That was the equivalent of those things in series. So the current flowing through here is 1.5. The current flowing through here is 1.5. The current flowing through here is 0.5. And then the current flowing through this is back to 2. Remember the 30, the 30 volts that was across this combination of resistors. How is that 30 volts shared amongst these things here? This one has three times the resistance than that one, right? So this one should get one quarter of the drop. This one should get three quarters of the drop. Yeah, you can go through and, and calculate each one of those. So if I want to get delta V, I times R, that'd be 1.5 times uh, 0.5. And so is that 0 0.7? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm not doing that correctly. Uh, that's 0.5. It's 1.5 times 5 ohms. Sorry about that. So it's, uh, yeah, it's 7.5 volts across that. And the other one would be 22.5. So there we go. What I've got now is I've got the voltage, the current, through every resistance value. And if I know the voltage and the current, I can get the power through any of those.
Okay. All right. Now I tried to show you. Uh, I tried to show you two examples that that just have um, you know a series and parallel combination. Here we've got a series of series and parallel back to series, and so so that process it just breaks it down into a simpler circuit. And then once I do that, I just start to go backwards through that to uh, to solve everything. Folks, it takes practice. Uh, what I gave uh, here for for this is I'm giving you five problems to try. Those five problems, one, four, seven, eight, eleven, just gonna take you a little bit of a little bit of time, a little bit of space. I would suggest on these. <clears throat> Uh, folks, you can get pretty good at this, but you can't do this uh, without having some 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 space there. So even though I gave this to you on on a separate sheet, you're likely not going to be able to get this solved in the space that I'm giving you here. So what I would suggest is that you take this and just sort of draw this circuit on a separate sheet, go through, analyze it. You need to calculate those values there, right? So the current flowing through all those. And if you know the current and the voltage, you can get everything else. Questions for me at all? I thank you for giving me the uh, option to do this recording. I hope those of you that are at home uh, were able to uh, follow that. And uh, I would, if I were you, I would speed that up to times one and a half or something like that. Times two. Times two. I don't know if you can handle that or not. But all right, that's it. That completes the lesson. Uh, have a great, uh, have a great day. Those of you that are at home.